Hi guys, welcome back. And today I want to talk about sleep deprivation as a military tool or tool for control and dreams and also the finger of God, which I feel ties into that. All right, let's get into the topic. So there's been a lot of talk overall, I feel on dreams and, you know, how people have all their opinions on dreams and what they really symbolize. I think the latest one I saw was all dreams are mind control, which I personally don't agree with. And I'll discover and talk about that in this video. But before we go into that, I want to talk about another aspect, which kind of ties into it, because I've personally been really going through that over the past two or three months. So I literally just came out of it, which is also why I pretty much needed a break from everything and everyone. But I had these two and a half months of full on sleep deprivation. I think I woke up in the beginning. I really woke up every single hour. And then at the end of it, it was more like every two or three hours, but still not enough to get a full night's sleep. And that was pretty much constant from November until January. So for pretty much eight to 10, 11 weeks, it was intense. And for my personal life, it had to do, I had to take care of six puppies and the mother actually stopped feeding them halfway through. So they had to be hand fed as well. In addition to keeping like the noise level down and everything, I had friends that asked me, why did the puppies not sleep through the night? Puppies usually don't sleep through the night in the beginning. That doesn't happen until, I don't know, 16 weeks or month four. It depends on the dog, obviously. But having six of those is actually more extreme than just having one because you kind of have to envision it like one is awake and then it falls asleep and then the other one is awake and then it falls asleep and then this the fourth fifth sixth all of them have different cycles and different schedules that they're on that basically always one was up especially if you put them together the way i did in this uh, segregated area uh, it was just chaos pure chaos so that's just a little bit of insight. And I know people who have children go through the same as well. You know, I'm following this one person online. I guess she's an influencer. She has like a few million followers. And she actually went through it the exact same time that I gone, I, that I went through it too, which I found pretty funny. Um, well, it wasn't funny when you're in it, but just because I'm out of it now, I kind of see that end of everything. And I'm like, wow, that was such a weird phase in my life. But she was going through it because she had the son who was around six months old. And for some reason, he got his nights and days mixed up, at least that what they think. So he was asleep during the day and then wide awake at night. And she was up like every half an hour, every hour, every two hours, too. And we were pretty much on the same schedule, from my understanding. And the way that she described it was very, very similar to the way that I experienced it as well. And people completely underestimate having to take care of another being, whether or not this being is a human being or just another soul. Like in my case, it was, you know, six different pets, like six very young pets who needed a lot of support. And yeah, sure, you can also argue, oh, just give him away, have him adopted or whatever. But I mean, that wasn't really a situation I was in. And so I went through it begrudgingly, especially halfway through. I was like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this to my life? I don't have to do that. I'm not under any obligation. But I did go through it. And I think for sure, it's a great preparation if you ever do want to become a parent. Because it kind of shows you a lot about how resilient you have to be in order to make it through. But it also showed me a lot about, you know, if I don't have any support from anyone else, which newly, freshly baked parents usually have, you know, they have support from their partners, they have support from their family, hopefully from their parents, maybe support from their friends. I guess it really depends on the circumstance. But if you don't have any support in all of this, the way it was for me specifically, because no one's really going to support you. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, let's just, uh, you know, help you out and on an another night or whatever, but it's just, if you don't have any of that support, it might not be worth it, at least in my opinion, because you're literally going to ruin your entire psyche and your body schedule and everything. 
And so my experience with it was when it first started happening, it was already really tough because the mother dog was not taking the pregnancies too well. So she already had like the two weeks before giving birth where she was just up constantly. And, you know, when they're up, you're up too, because you just feel it when you're energetically just so attuned to one another. It's just painful. Let's put it that way. I guess if I lived on a farm, it would be different. I don't. I live in an apartment. So that was also another situation. So at first, the first few weeks, you're like, okay, uh, I know hopefully it's going to go back to normal at one point. But then after week two or three, when it just doesn't go back to normal, that's when you start realizing it's affecting every single aspect of your life. And I can tell you one thing, you know, some people complain about dreaming or weird dreams or whatever but another aspect of that is simply not dreaming at all which was almost the case for me I had like a few sporadic nights here and there where I did dream but for most of the time I wasn't dreaming at all because you you can't even make it into the rapid eye movement state the REM state which is required for you to dream so for that you have to obviously be asleep for at least an hour some people say one and a half 90 minutes to two and a half hours, but you have to be constantly, you know, kind of asleep for a longer time. For in my case, I wasn't even asleep long enough until I was woken up again to really experience the, the REM state, which was pretty concerning because I'm actually someone who dreams every single night. I do have a journal where I write down most of my dreams. I've been doing that since I was a teenager, by the way. So I also have you know, all my journals from when I was younger. And yeah, it's just, I personally feel from what I've experienced, just to get back to the sleep deprivation uh, stage, I do think for some people, including myself, including others who really need sleep, because I have a friend, she doesn't sleep at all. She, she sleeps maybe three or four hours a night. I don't know how she does it. And that's it. And I have no idea how she's been doing that for years and years and years. I don't think it's healthy at all, by the way. But for me and others who literally need their eight hours of sleep every single night, I think sleep deprivation is probably the most effective tool to break someone, to break someone with their mind, with their body, with everything. You know, some people say it's a military tool they use. I do believe that after having that experience, I was like, yeah, because after... I mean, if you see it in hours after 20 or 30 hours or 40 hours of that, supposedly you start hallucinating. If you haven't slept in 40 plus hours, the hallucinations start to kick in. And then at one point you can even die if you haven't, if you haven't slept consistently. Now, if you're getting like an hour here, an hour there, an hour there, you can obviously prolong that for weeks and weeks and weeks, but it's still not very ha healthy. And I just found it was this gradual process of, okay, another night of nothingness, you know, another night of just completely being disturbed in your normal schedule and your, your normal cycle. I'm not really a person who takes naps. I tried. I mean, my mom was suggesting that too. She's like, why don't you sleep during the day? I'm like, well, it's the same thing. They're still going to wake you up every hour or every two or three hours because they're so needy at that point. For some people that might work. For me personally, that didn't work. But it's also a gradual process. Once you've made it through all of that, let's just say whoever caused the sleep deprivation, in this case, maybe a child for some, uh, let's just say they're old enough and you, you're finally back in your normal sleep schedule. It's actually a gradual process to get back to your regular sleep, sleep cycle and also feel normal. So what I personally found after all of that happened and I finally had like just a week off to recuperate was it wasn't normal after just one night you know the first night I think I got a good 10 hours of sleep again and then the night after that nine hours and then another nine another eight so I did get a pretty good uh, sleep cycle back in but I didn't feel normal like that it definitely took a few nights if not even up to a week to finally feel like wow and I guess you could kind of compare it to jet lag in a form or another. It's just it's just way longer than jet lag, you know, um, like this entire experience was just pretty out there. Um, so you have the extreme of not sleeping and also the extreme of not dreaming, very unpleasant. And I do think if you really wanted to break someone, even people I feel who don't need that much sleep, like my one friend that I just mentioned, just have them not sleep 
for a few ages, you know, for a few days and see what happens. Because I do think uh, we just kind of need it to definitely rest our bodies, rest our minds as well. That was another thing that I noticed. It was very hard to focus on anything during the day. It was very hard to get regular admin stuff done, you know, just like kind of editing something that you wrote or just trying to get anything really done. Um, even going to the store, I mean, yeah, it's possible. I mean, you're super exhausted. What I did notice is the body gets used as crazy as it sounds and as, you know, poor as it sounds, because you're really not supposed to live a life like this, but your body does get used to the sleep de deprivation more than your mind and your psyche, which is connected to your mind does. So I do feel your body can be tired for a longer time than your mind can be tired for. But it's just so unpleasant that I really wouldn't want to wish it upon anyone. And that's kind of the experience that I had made recently, just because it was so recent. I just wanted to share that with you. And that kind of ties into going into dreams. So what are dreams really? So the big question of the day, um, a lot of people seem to have an opinion on dreams and, you know, what they are for them. I can talk from my own personal experience once again, because for me, dreams are huge. Dreams have always been huge. I even write my dreams down. You know, I have like a few dream journals here and I even go through them. You know, last time I went through it, like when I was 13, 14 years old and I was like, wow, that was such a, a strange dream. That kind of makes sense to me now though. and. I had this astrologer when I was in Arizona a few years ago. I had like a birthday astrology reading because why not? You know, he seemed like he knew what he was talking about. He seemed a bit more seasoned as well, which was nice because usually I had consulted these younger astrologers who had just been doing it for a few years. I was like, okay, let's just ask this guy who's in his 60s, who has obviously been doing that for 30, 40 years. At least he says he has. And it was a really good astrology reading. It's actually one that I enjoyed the most so far. So I got my birthday astrology reading done. And the moment he looked at the chart, he was like, I mean, aside from the fact that it was on my actual birthday, he was like, ah, oh, you have the finger of God. Never heard that ever before from any astrologer. I think I've had five or six astrology readings done so far. I haven't heard that from any astrologers so far. So I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be a little bit of a different reading because that's intriguing to me. And he started explaining what the finger of God means. He showed me somehow it has to do with this triangle thing that's all over your chart somehow. Once again, you know, I'm not a huge believer in astrology. And due to the fact that I have a twin sister, we have almost the same chart and our lives are so completely different. As some of you guys know at this point, I'm very skeptical towards it because I feel free will can override any astrology chart that you have. However... Uh, he did make a lot of sense with certain things. And so he was explaining this finger of God, which is also the Yod, Y-O-D to me. And as he was explaining it, he was asking me a whole bunch of questions. And one of them was like, oh, do you dream vividly? And do you remember all your dreams? And I was like, yes, from the start, from when I was a kid on, I've always remembered every single dream that I've had. And he said it had to do with that and some other aspect, which I forgot. So for me, for these past few years that I've known that, it was just a confirmation that I kind of already knew. For me, dreams are always going to be a huge thing in my life. Um, for me, some of my dreams are futuristic or prophetic in that sense. Back in 2019, I had just made friends with this group of entertainers, you know, similar to, let's just say Broadway. It wasn't a Broadway performers, but it was similar to that. I had just befriended them, had never dealt with that industry before, really. And I had this very vivid dream how this group that had been active, because they were also a little bit older, you know, they had been active in their industry for 30 plus years, I want to say. Most of them were almost even going to retire. And in this dream, so this is early 2019, a full year before 2020, they were out there searching for an entertainment industry job, pretty much trying to perform in front of all these smaller venues right outside of New York City, such as Westchester White Plains, which is like a good hour outside. 
And, you know, the stream, they were all bunched up in the same room. So they're kind of like the way I interpret it is they were all in the same boat, you know, professionally, even though they did all these different things, like, you know, one was a performer, the other one was a costume designer, all of that. They were all in the same boat in that dream. And it did make sense to me because I was like, why on earth, if you have this high paying job with something similar to Broadway, would you ever need to be able to audition at a tiny, tiny venue somewhere outside of New York or somewhere in, in you know, nothing area, middle of nowhere, US or somewhere else? And back in 2019, I was like, oh, this makes like no sense. Weird. But now it actually makes a whole bunch of sense. And actually, sorry, someone just rang. Yeah, as we all know, so back in 2020, you know, everything closed down. And I think any venue that was similar to Broadway and Broadway itself was shut down for one and a half years, if not even longer, with massive restrictions on all the staff and everyone who was a performer. So that was one dream that I had pretty recently that pretty much, you know, turned out to be true. It just, it was up to interpretation how you would interpret it but in a form or another, you know, it showed me a year in advance that we're up for some hard times, especially for those type of people, but it was the entire world. There are other dreams I've had in regards to friends and people I was dating. You know, I was with this one really sketchy guy at one point and I kept having this dream how I was being bit by something or someone. And it turns out he was very dishonest. He was not loyal. But I had the same dream also when I was uh, tapping into my one friend who was, yeah, she was a friend for a long time, you know, 10 plus years at that point. We were very close and I kept getting these weird dreams on her. So whenever I get a strange dream on another person, I already know I'm picking up on their intentions and that something's a bit foul there. For me personally, dreams do come true in a form or another, or at least they show me these huge messages. Dreams also are psychic attacks, though, and I mentioned a lot of that in my psychic protection course and how you can differentiate between the psychic attack and the dream being more honest. Uh, dreams can also be intentions of people or just in general, someone preventing you from wanting to be with that person. So you can really pick up on intentions of other people that have to do with that too. And I was just reading on it. You know, I was like, what are dreams really? Are they like this program? Uh, messages from the soul, I'm still getting that. Hidden agendas, people's thoughts and intentions. Psychic attacks, unnatural. It's unnatural for me and possibly also others not to dream because our creativity is also expressed through it. Now, for those people who say, oh, it's just a mind control program, it's just this and just that. Yeah, sure, we've been knowing that for a very long time. Anyone who's seen the movie Inception, which has Leonardo DiCaprio in it, and it came out, ooh, when did it come out? 2010, right? It came out a while ago. Uh, just to go over the plot again. So Leo is a thief with the rare ability to enter people's dreams and steal their secrets from their subconscious. His skill has made him a hot commodity in the world of corporate espionage, but has also cost him everything he loves. He gets a chance at redemption when he's offered a seemingly impossible task, plant an idea in someone's mind. If he succeeds, it will be the perfect prime, but a dangerous enemy anticipates his every move. And in this specific movie, which I dissect in another video, and I'll blend that video in, it talks about different layers to dreams. So at least three that you have to puncture through but of course it has an unlimited amount of layers, you know, and these people are called extractors who just kind of infiltrate their targets subconscious and extract information, ability to layer multiple dreams within each other. And it's all about implanting the specific idea in a person's head. And for you who have seen the movie, which is myself included, I found it very, very interesting because it shows a lot about the technology they've had 15 years ago and possibly way longer before that, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years ago, because if they're disclosing it to the public in a movie, it's been around for a long time. So it is correct that not every single dream is going to be a message from your soul. 
But I do think a lot of dreams, it depends on how you dream. You know, some people tell me, oh, they don't dream at all, unless it's like one dream a month or so. I do think we all have the ability to dream. But for me, dreams in general just have always been important in my life. And so I've never really had an issue remembering them. There are certain things that you can do so that you remember them in the morning, like intention setting is the a major one, but there are also other exercises you can do, which if you're interested in that, you know, let me know there could be something on it in the future. But just to get back to this entire dream concept, yeah, for sure, you know, for sure something can be implanted. Like I had a dream about a relative once, which I know for sure was supposed to implant a lot of fear into me. And it, as it turns out, she was fine after all. So this is also during the 2020 time. She's older. I think back then she was late 80s, early 90s, where, what was the dream again? I think she fell or there was an accident and she broke her collarbone, which is you know, not good at that age. And then something with her eye as well. So they were trying to put all this stuff on her. And immediately when I woke up, I had this really bad aftertaste in my mouth. And I was like, oh, that was not a dream that was trying to tell me something. That was not like a soul message from my soul to tell me she's not okay. No, I think that was literally a dream that they tried to implant in me somehow or try to push in my subconscious so that I'm either scared, like kind of like a warning. If you continue what you're doing, we're going to hurt this person or just to make me more scared and afraid of speaking out against things. Cause that was also the pivotal year for me when I was speaking out about every single agenda that was going on, which I still love to do. It's just that this channel also discusses other things at this point. So yes, of course there are dreams like that too. And for me personally, is it hard to differentiate from one dream to another? Sometimes the line is very blurry, but oftentimes it is like this this bitter aftertaste or this weird the way you wake up from it that determines a lot of how organic that dream was i do have to say the dreams have gotten stranger and stranger over these past few months like i there was a time in the past two or three months where i wasn't really dreaming as i just explained in the beginning of the video but the few times that i was dreaming and then the ways i have been dreaming now they are getting stranger and stranger which I think is also due to the times we're in and them trying to push everything onto us in the astral. But overall, I'm not going to say my dreams are a mind program or something that is going to control me because it's just not the truth that I've experienced. And I still strongly believe that I received very pivotal soul messages, soul messages through the dream. And I do still think that I see parts of the future through the dream too, at least the future that's not as fluid and in flux. Uh, as I also discussed in a different video. So that's what I had to say in regards to this entire topic. Sleeping is very important, very important for your skin to regenerate, your body to regenerate, just in general, for you to get some rest, for your mind to rest as well. And I feel that's also why the dreaming is important because it kind of regenerates this whole new batch of something, you know, of just a different outlook or creativity. And something that, for me personally, something that was the most concerning is really not being able to dream over those two, three months that I experienced because I felt there's something really was missing somehow. You know, it just, it just felt really half arsed going to sleep for just a few hours here and there and not really being able to experience that sleep cycle that's actually really important. All right, if you have an opinion, let me know. If you have your own experiences, let me know too. And if you have a dream that actually came true, let us all know. Talk to you very soon. Bye, guys. Have a good one.